Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Mini Monday. Today we are going to look at a script that I found on GitHub and this thing is literally too good not to share. This is a fully automated script that will help you deploy a fully operational adversary emulation tool in literally minutes. So welcome back, thanks for being here. Today I want to show you this GitHub repo that I found. So this is a guy called Jason and I believe Jason is an instructor with Sans. I found a video that had him in it on YouTube about a month or two ago and I ended up somehow getting onto his GitHub and finding this gem of a repo. Now I'm going to show you so what it does. So if we open up the automated emulation, let's go down and I'll show you exactly what it does. So this script automatically builds a Linux server that has Caldera and Vector installed. Then it also builds another Windows server and the Windows server, which is 2022, automatically has the Caldera agent installed. Once you run down through the script and once it's built, it actually outputs the link to the server, which is hosted in Amazon Web Services and everything you need. And it's literally done in minutes. So let's run through this build process. I've already forked this repo in my account and I've got it open up in Visual Studio. So let's log into Visual Studio and we'll run through the build and we'll see just see how good it is. So I have this automated emulation repository open up in Visual Studio. Now there is one change I need to make to this file, the providers.tf, and I need to add this thing here. So the profile equals AWS Cloud Lab. That is my profile that I have set up for AWS in Visual Studio. So under the AWS extension, you should see whenever you first log in and you connect Visual Studio to AWS, it gives you an option to sign in. And as part of that sign in, it creates a local profile. That's just the credentials that it uses to connect out. So you need to tell the providers.tf what profile you want to use to deploy this to the cloud. So now you've made the change you need in the providers.tf file. There's one more change that you need to do on your Amazon Web Services account. If you log into your AWS account, go into S3 and under the block public access settings for this account, let's just turn that off temporarily because it will give you an error message when you go to deploy this workload. So if you've made those two changes, then that's us. We are ready to go and get this deployed. So I'm just going to open up a terminal window and the first thing I'm going to do is run a Terraform validate. This will actually validate the code and make sure there's no problems within the code. So the next thing we need to do is just deploy this workload and all we have to do is type in Terraform apply and I'm going to also going to add the auto approve. So once you've done that, just hit enter and that is going to go out and deploy all of this workload to Amazon Web Services. Whenever you deploy this workload initially, you will see this error message at the bottom of the screen. And I did some research and I believe this is related to the S3 bucket that has been created. Amazon automatically block public access to that bucket. Now, the way I fix this, I literally just run Terraform apply again. So just push the up arrow and hit enter and that will run down through the deployment again and make those changes that it missed initially in the first deployment. So as you can see, that bit there is the bit that it needs to do. The deployment has done. I've waited about 15 minutes and I've let that deploy. So if I move up here, I want to show you where you can get all the credentials for all of these tools. So if you go all the way back up here, this is the Terraform output. And as you can see, it actually gives me the vector, the URL for the console. It gives me the username and it gives me the password. And I also get the same thing for Caldera. I have the usernames and password for the various different accounts. There's the API keys is here. There is some other information down here along. If you want to SSH into the Ubuntu VM, you have that. It does have other details here around the deployment, which is really handy. But at the bottom, you have the Windows machine. So you can see the public IP, the username and the password. So if you want to connect to them, you can because the details are all here. But let's see if we can access the platforms in the browser. So as you can see, Caldera is built and also so is Vector. Let's get the credentials that we need to log into Caldera. So that one is Caldera 2024. So let's log in here as red. Password is Caldera 2024. As you can see, this is version five, which actually looks a bit nicer than version four. In terms of agents, you can see it has already installed the agent on the Windows machine. That's perfect, that's amazing. 
Let's see if we can get into Vector now. Just put in the username and password, admin, and then the password. Let's log in. And we are in. It looks like this tool is up and running as well. I can't believe how fast this is actually. If you followed some of the other videos, you can see that it takes a bit of time to build Ubuntu Server and, and go through the manual install of Caldera. This is just a really, really fast and easy way just to spin these things up and shut them down again. I'll show you how you can delete everything as well. Let's see if we can connect to our Windows Server. So I've opened up Microsoft Remote Desktop on this laptop and I've added my Windows machines. I've added the public IP address and the username and password. Let's double click on this and hit connect to open up and see if we can connect to that VM. And just like that, that that's pretty much it. That's up and running. So there you go. That's a really easy and fast way that you can use to deploy a fully emulated automation tool. A lot of people had asked me previously, can they build the lab using different machines and laptops and stuff and deploying this in AWS and just using it for an hour here and there when you need it is just the perfect way to learn this tool. So one thing to remember, once you have finished with the lab and you want to tear it all down, you just want to delete everything, it's very, very easy to do. So you need to go back into Visual Studio Code and we are going to add this Terraform, destroy, Auto approve, just do that, hit enter, that's going to reach out to Amazon Web Services and just destroy all of the workload that it's just built. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. If you also want to deploy this and you need to understand how to install all the different apps, then a few weeks ago I made a video about installing apps and how fast it was using Homebrew and Chocolate. So if you haven't seen that, this video will help you.